Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. So happy to have all of you this morning. We'll go ahead and open our Bibles, if you will, once again to our, our foundation text of Proverbs chapter 20. Or, or, to be more accurate, the 20th proverb and the 27th verse. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Now, he knows he didn't say the head of man, the, the mind of man. He didn't say the body of man. He said the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Last week, we talked about how that the spirit of man your, is your lamp. One, one translation says the lamp of the Lord. Our inner man, the spirit of man, is the part of man that God communes with, the part of man, uh, man that God talks to, the part of man that is in contact with God. God is not in contact with your body. Now, you understand he can affect your body, but that's, that's not how he talks to you. He doesn't talk to you through your head. He talks to you in your spirit. Glory to God. And we talked about last week how that um, the, uh, the, the first book of Thessalonians in the fifth chapter, in the 23rd verse says that I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. What is that he's talking about? Man's a triune being. He is a spirit. He possesses a soul. He lives in a body. We know without your body, now Paul said to be, uh, to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. So we know that the body is not the real part of man or the part of man that is eternal. Okay, your spirit is the eternal part. You will get a glorified body at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember this corruption, she put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality in the moment and twinkling of an eye. But if you read, uh, read all the context of, of, the rap, of, of the catching away of the saints in the church, it says this, that those which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, what did Paul say? Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, what rises? They get their body back. But they get the incorruptible, immortal body back. Okay? But the way God communes with us, because God is a spirit. Now, he is not spirit. He is a spirit. He is not cosmic cloud. God is a divine, distinct personality. He has a spiritual body. Jesus came and took on a flesh and bone body, or a flesh and blood body, and then after the resurrection, the flesh and bone. Why? Because his blood's on the mercy seat. Can you say amen? amen? Glory to God. His blood is not flowing through his veins anymore. The glory of God flows through his veins. Hallelujah. His blood's on the mercy seat. Hallelujah. And so we were talking about man's triune being, and that God communicates with our spirits. God talks to our spirits. Talked about how that we're an eternal being. Praise God. Can you say amen? Talked about we, we deal with the hidden man of the heart. And then we kind of were wrapping up last week about being spirit conscious and not body conscious. Your soul, your soul, the suke of man. Now remember, man is a spirit, pneuma in the Greek. Soul, he has a soul, suke in the Greek. And lives or abides on this realm in a soma, body in the Greek. Okay, soma is the word for body. All right, so we are, we are a pneuma, suke, and soma. We're spirit, soul, and body. The, the, we understand in the Old Testament, the words for, for, for soul was used interchangeably with spirit. And you had to read context more closely. In the New Testament, there's a more distinction drawn. Okay, and so that you find more clearly the, the usages of the Greek words that differentiate the different parts of man, spirit, soul, and body. And uh, then that's more revelation. So they were walking in what revelation they had. God, God had to deal with them after the flesh. You know, they had to have covenants. They had to have lightning come down. They had to have fire on the mountain. They had to have the earth open up. All kinds of stuff they had because God had to deal with that much by the flesh because they weren't born again. They weren't walking in their spirits. All right. They had, they had, you know, well, under the New Testament. See, this is what the thing. God said, and in the, in, in there was a day coming. Remember, when he prophesied about the day coming, I believe in Ezekiel. He said, in that day, I'll write my law in the hearts. Amen? And not in tables of stone. Amen? You know, and, I'll, and I won't be with them, but I'm going to be in them. Glory to God. See, the, the whole purpose of the, of, of the old covenant was to get us to Christ. 
to get Christ here, get Christ uh, taking our place for our, being our sin substitute, becoming sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, resurrect him, and then again impart eternal life, not, not into our body, not into our head, but into our spirits, so that we once again can be joined spirit to spirit with the Father of spirits. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, the new birth. The new birth is, is glorious. The new birth is wonderful. Hallelujah. The new birth is what Jesus came for. Hallelujah. Not so we can just have a list of rules and ordinances, do's and don'ts. You know, all that just show what God demanded. Then you got people running around saying, if you take, oh, God, God don't do the do's and don'ts anymore. Yeah, he does. He did before the law. He did it during the law. He did it after the law. It's just that we're now empowered to do it. Because we're born again, hallelujah. The life of God's in us. The Holy Spirit's abiding in us. We're under the grace of God, the strengthening and the empowering grace of God that empowers us to do what God said do. Grace isn't here so you can do what you want to do and get away with it. Grace is here to empower you not to do the things that you would do in the flesh that you couldn't help but doing. Like Flip Wilson and Geraldine, his alter ego. The devil made me do it, honey. He put that wig and dress on it. Now, see, back then it was funny. Now it's, oh, uh, anyway, and it, praise the Lord. Because he wasn't, he wasn't trying to be a cross-dresser. He was just, you know, like uh, uh, Medea. Tyler Perry and Medea. Have you ever, who has never seen a Medea movie? Bless your heart. <clears throat> oh, my. If you want to laugh, I, I, I rolled. When I saw Beat the Browns for the first time, I fell off the bed and the floor. And just, I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. When he got to that part, he said, your daddy was a pimp. Anyway, I couldn't, oh, my goodness, hallelujah. But man, man's spirit is what communes with God, hallelujah. And so let's talk about, you know, what is it, our different parts, because next week we're going to talk about actually being led by the spirit, but let's, let's get some clarity here. You see, one of the problems in the church today is if somebody gets a thought, they think it's God. Dad Hagen used to say one of the, one of the uh, greatest needs in the church, and he said this back in the 80s, and I don't think it's changed. He said one of the greatest needs in the church today is minds renewed to the Word of God. Amen. Why? Because people just think something, oh, that's God. He said, well, prove it in the Bible. I can't prove that in the Bible. I just know it's God because I heard God. No, you're, you had something float through your head. Then the other part is because they're carnal, if something gives them a goosebump feeling, they think that's God. I've had goosebump feelings, and it was the devil. The Bible says, be, be careful who you entertain. You've entertained angels unaware. And then it says that Satan himself can manifest as an angel of light. You've got to be led by the Spirit, not by your goosebumps. And not by little, every little whim that floats through your head. Because a lot of times what floats through your head is your body telling what you want to hear. Come on now. Hey, well, well, I disagree because I know I... No, you didn't hear from God. I can prove it from the Bible you didn't hear from God. Number of years... I'm sorry. Whew. Praise the Lord. Glory. Number of years ago, we had somebody in our church, and they were, they were a young baby Christian. They were carnal and uh, on capital C-A-R. <laughs> I mean, it was all caps. You know, N-A-L, all caps, you know. And they, 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 they were excited about the Lord. And, you know, you, you, you let babes do, get away with a lot of stuff. All right? But anyway, they left and went to a concert in another city. And, um, and then they never came home that night. They told their mom, I'll be home by 11, 11.30. They never came home and uh, never, never went into a, back then they didn't have a cell phone. Uh, didn't contact their, their parents to let them know that they weren't going to be coming home. You know, and, and then the next morning they come strolling into the house. The mom's frantic. The mom's like a nutbag. And then she starts saying, well, the Lord told me to stop and witness to these two guys. And they sat in my car all night and I witnessed to them. And the mom, where are you going to church? I'm going to Faith and Victory Church. Guess who gets a phone call? What kind of church are you? Whoa, lady. I don't teach that. Because the Bible says, honor your mother and your father. Why? That it may be well with you, that you may live long on the earth. Hallelujah. Are you here? You know, I mean, if God did tell her, he would have told her, go, go get a quarter and ride over to the phone booth and, put up some, and call mama and tell her what you're doing and what's going on so she won't be sitting up all night worrying. Oh, but the Lord told me. I said, ma'am, I said, I apologize. We don't teach that. I will talk to her. 
And I did talk to her. I said, the Lord didn't tell you to do that. He didn't tell you to sit in the car all night long with two guys witnessing to them and leaving your mom at home frantic all over the place. Well, she shouldn't have been worried. I don't care. Parents care about their children. And especially if they don't know anything about the Bible, they may not, they may not know how to get into faith or to get, you know, pray, in, pray until they get relaxed or relief, you know, about where their kids are, what's going on. Hello? Are you here? See, she had a fault come for whatever reason and said that was God. But see, if you're listening on the inside, God's going to lead you in a way that brings peace. Amen? She could have witnessed to them in five minutes and then turned it over to the Holy Ghost. There are going to be people you could, you could witness to until you turn purple. And you, not going, and you could be Barney and then turn yellow and be Baby Bop and not get anything done. Hello? We, we are to share the truth, and then it's the Holy Ghost's job to work on them. It's not your job to get them saved. God didn't say go save them. He said go preach the gospel. Amen? But the fact that she didn't call her mama and let her know what was going on, stayed out all night. And call, and then go blame it on God. God, no, God didn't speak to her. She had a thought. I've had people do all kinds of things. They said, well, I, you know, just had, they, they had a thought because they said, the Lord's speaking to me. No, we got to learn the difference between what's going through your head and what's coming out of your spirit. What's really God. Now, there's some things we're going to cover about that because I'm going to tell you something. You need to be a student of the Word so you can differentiate, but let the Word divide the spirit from the soul. Because I can tell you, your head can be saying opposite of what God's saying. Happens all the time. Your head's saying one thing, but on the inner man, the inner, the inner man's saying do this. There are going to be times in faith your head's screaming, I can't do it! Oh, I'm going to be destroyed! And your spirit say, we got it, baby. We got it, baby. Amen. And you got you to know the difference. Hello. So there's a difference between the, uh, the, the spirit and the soul. Uh, like Brother Hagin used to say, the spirit, you contact the spirit realm. The body, you contact the physical realm. And with the soul, you contact the intellectual realm. How? Now, let me say this. If you're not charismatic, we love you. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Do not tell me tongues are of the devil. There's no place in the Bible that it ever says that tongues were of the devil. Hello? Well, Paul said he'd rather speak five words with an understanding than 10,000 words in tongues. And he thanked God he spoke in tongues more than the whole Corinthian church. The Greek actually says more than you or all of you put together. And that was the tongue talking in his church in all of Asia. Are, are you here? Nobody spoke in tongues more than the Corinthian church. Hello. Paul said he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries or divine secrets to God. He said, yet in the church. When I'm standing in the pulpit, it won't do you a bit of good for me to get up here and speak in tongues the whole service. I, well, I'll get blessed. You might see me dance, might get run around the church, and you'll just sit out there and go, whoo, he's getting blessed. I didn't get a thing. So in the church, when I'm addressing people, when I'm ministering to people, I need to speak in a language they understand. Are you here or are you going home? But you need your spirit in contact with the Father of Spirits. Praying in other tongues, praying in the Spirit. Paul wrote into the, to the church in 1 Corinthians 14, 14. If I, pray in an unknown, if I pray in an unknown tongue, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. My Spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, prays. But my mind's unproductive. Okay? Well, sure it is. You don't know what you're saying. But your Spirit is getting tuned up. See, when we pray in other tongues, our Spirit gets in tune with God. Now, when our spirits get in tune with God and we haven't renewed our mind to the Word of God, guess what? We, we're, out of, we're out of balance. We're out of tune. What happens, um, you know, if we, if we have several musicians up here? And um, I'm just going to use some standard keys because I don't know them good enough anyway. you got Nathan playing guitar in key of C. you got, you know, the, the electric guitar. He's playing over in the key of C. And then you get somebody, now, now I don't know where, I can't see Nathan right now, I was going to ask him, what's a really odd or out of tune key? Uh, an F sharp. And somebody's out here playing, supposed to be playing a rhythm guitar, and he gets out of tune. What happens? He, you go, oh man, just messed it all up. 
Or you got people singing vocals. You know, you got people singing, you know, they're all singing, harm you got people singing harmony and one person singing lead, and they're supposed to harmonize. They're supposed to find a, a, a matching key and, and, and uh, range that, that, that blends with the, with the, the, uh, the lead singer, and, uh, and, and you get a nice sound. Now, I'm going to tell you, you may not like their music, you may not have ever liked their music. I like pre-disco, disco, and post-disco Bee Gees. They are the best vocal harmonization of any group I've ever heard. Their harmonies were phenomenal. <laughs> Sold more albums than the Beatles. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I think either they sold more soul or a second. I, I think they sold more than the Beatles. But they were there longer. The Beatles weren't around for so long. You know, they, had, they, they all broke up. But their vocals were so, even in, even in falsetto, their vocals were amazing. It just, they, you just, you know, you listen to it, you go, you got to be kidding. How can anybody do that? Then you hear people try to do Bee Gees. And you got some guy off here off in the woods somewhere trying to run, run the scale. You can't run the scale when you're doing harmonies. You know? And it was, it was just beautiful. You see, when, now, when your spirit's in tune with God and your soul is not renewed to the Word of God, it gets out of tune. And, you're, and, and usually people who get out of tune are hearing something else. Either they don't have a good ear or their, their mind is, is interpreting something in a way differently. I, I, my son told me, he said, you know, all you got to do to get someone who sings flat is to get them to sing on a higher note because they're hearing they're hearing a different note than what they're singing. So you get them to sing up higher, and, and when they, instead of being flat, they'll come in on pitch. So it takes training to do it. Well, it takes renewing the mind to get the mind in tune where it's in tune with the Spirit. Okay? This is why we have to renew our minds to the Word of God so that we can be led by the Spirit effectively. You can be led by the Spirit, but sometimes people, you're hit and miss. I know people who are hit and miss. Knew a minister one time. He, you know, uh, someone at work for him was a good friend of mine. And, uh, and um, love you, Joe. Lo love Joe. He's a great guy. And uh, he was working for this particular ministry and said one night, you know, the Holy Ghost came on the minister and he, he went up there and he just grabbed a pitcher of water off the platform. They used to have a pitcher with you know, water for those speakers and just took it and went out and slung it across the congregation. And everybody that hit that, that, was, that needed healing got healed. They would get baptized in the Holy Ghost. I mean, everything that somebody needed happened. See, next night, he went and grabbed the pitcher of water and slung it out over the congregation. And they got wet. It was just, you know, the night before they were led by the Spirit. The next night, it was just, their head told them. You've got to become in tune with God. Starting with your spirit. That's how praying in the tongues. Get your spirit. And then you have to renew your mind to the Word of God. So that it can get in harmony. Because I'm going to tell you, when your, nine, mind, when your mind is not renewed to the Word of God, it will be in harmony with your flesh. And that a lot of things you're hearing in your head and you're calling it God is just pure flesh. Let me give you one. I heard this one lately, in the past few months. This big article in, this, in, in some major newspaper about this couple. And they have discovered the way to lead people to Jesus. They invite a couple over. You remember the old 70s wife swapping parties? They invite them over. They switch partners. They have sex with them. And then, quote, lead them to the Lord. Because what better way to show the love of God than having sex with somebody? Now, let me tell you where they did not get that from. They did not get that from their spirit, God talking to their spirit. Where did they get it from? See, their mind obviously is not renewed to the Word of God because the Bible says, he that, lusts, he that looketh on another woman to uh, lust after commits adultery already. Amen? The Bible prohibits fornication. That is sex outside of marriage. Any act of sex outside of marriage, the marriage covenant of a man and a woman. Therefore, a man shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. There is no other kind of marriage. Donkey marriage, elephant marriage, same-sex marriage, 
you know, uh, change your whole body style on the outside marriage. It is a man and a woman, genetically what you are, that is marriage with God. A man and a woman. Anything else is not marriage. And if you engage in sexual activity in that state, if you're, it is fornication. If they or you are married under the eyes of God and according to the word of God, I don't care what the Supreme Court says. I don't care what the law says in America. God has a higher law. Are you here? And any, if, you're, if you are another person married, then it's adultery. Now, God prohibits both vehemently. Are you here? So it didn't come from God speaking to their spirit to tell them to go switch off partners and have sex with them to show them his love. Where did it come from? An unredeemed mind listening to the body. It said, sounds good. No, it, it fed the appetites of the carnal flesh. And Paul wrote to the church and says, do not yield your members as servants of unrighteousness unto death. Hello. So we cannot just go around and say, well, I'm born again. God speaks to me. And then you start spouting off all this stuff the Bible doesn't support. God wants to lead you by your spirit. But you're, you're so, you you're, you're so wishy-washy with it, you don't know when it's God and when it's not God. You got a goosebump. That's God. I'm going to tell you, I've had God move and God do things, but I didn't have a goosebump, didn't have a feeling. As a matter of fact, I said this a couple weeks ago, I, if I went by how I felt, I'd go out and shoot myself. And God works miracles. Well, can, I walked into a church service uh, down in Fayetteville a couple years, three, about three years ago now. Walked into a church service, and man, I'd driven, I'd driven through Fayetteville during rush hour. Fort Bragg, getting out, everybody getting off of Fort Bragg, and going, I mean, you go going, you gotta, there's only one way to get where I was going, is go right through the middle of it. I mean, you know, Fort Bragg is divided. When you come into, Fort, when you come into Wilmington, where I was going, you ride through, Fort Bragg's over here, and Fort Bragg's over here, you got the gates that you can go to the side of the, of the compound, you know, and all that traffic's there, and there's no way to get around it, and you're just, you're dealing with all that stuff, and you're running around, and you're, you're trying to get to church service, and you're trying to get there in time so you can get a little refreshed, and you get down, and you're wore out from just driving. Hey, my God. Jeff knows what I'm talking about. He knows what a church is. Yeah. You know, you just get, and you get down there, and, and then you walk in, and you got, you got to get up, you know, and be ready. And your flesh is going, man, I'm tired. I've, I've had services where I was sick as a dog, came in faith, had a fever, standing there, believing God, you know, to be able to minister. You know, and, and you, 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 you could feel the fever. You feel it. Your head's like in a drum. and had some of the most powerful services. And I, I didn't feel it. So I can't believe it. I'm talking about, I'm not confessing I'm going, going to be sick as a dog. I'm talking about what it was. It was. Hello. Man, I felt like, I, I'm thinking, stop the service, let me lay down. Y'all come up and beat me with a baseball bat so I can feel better. And God worked miracles. People get saved. People get baptized in the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit, manifestation and demonstration. And you're sitting there going, well, it ain't how I feel. And then I've had service me. I thought, whoa, I got it tonight. <laughs> Nothing. You felt, oh, whoo, I got every goose bump you could have. Hallelujah. Let me run. And nothing. So it can't be how you feel. See, God leads us in the inner man, not through our flesh. Quit waiting for the goosebumps. Quit waiting for the feeling. Ha. Amen? Keep, keep, quit waiting for somebody to stir up your emotions to get you to follow God. Hello? Now, listen, I love to preach as much as the next guy. And I love good preaching. But you can't only follow God when you've had good preaching that day. We've got to be led by the Spirit of God all the time. Can somebody say amen? amen? So anyway, I was down at this church and in this service, and we're sitting there at the end of the service, and the, and the, and the Word of Knowledge begins to manifest. I still don't feel like anything, but I've, I've walked with God long enough to know Him. Now, he's talking, but I'm, I'm not feeling it. Now, listen, there is nothing like 
laying hands on people and feeling the power go out of you into them. Oh, man, it's just heavenly. But I'm not led by that. When I minister, I minister by faith. Under the anointing, trusting God's at work, not me. Can you say amen? Sometimes you, you can actually feel. I felt the power go out and, hit and go into people. I felt it go out and come back, come back out of them because they were, they were not there in faith. You've got, you got to talk to them and try to get them back over in their faith. Stop, release, re, just receive. I, I felt it. I've ministered to people, laid hands on them, didn't feel a thing, and they got, they got healed. Walked out of their well. And I'm, and no, won't nobody in the room more surprised than me because I didn't feel a thing. Are you here? So I began to, to flow in the word of knowledge, and, you know, and, I, and I said, somebody here just went to the doctor today, and uh, you got, there's some kidney problems. And this mama on the front, this woman on the front row, that's like eight months pregnant or something. I mean, dear Lord, she loves to get ready to deliver my service. Just breaks down and starts bawling. Did I say something? I said, well, come on. Well, she gets up and starts walking up, blubbering. And, uh, and I think Sister Paula went over and put her arm around her, and because and she, she's getting the interpretation, not tongues. The woman's bubbling, bubbling so much she can't understand what she's saying. And she said, and she finally was able to tell me what happened. The woman had just come straight from church from the doctor. And they had done an ultrasound on her baby, and something was wrong with the baby's kidneys. She had just found out. Well, we laid hands on her. I left town. Well, Pastor Bill had me come back the next year and preach in his faith conference. And so I'm down there, and Sister Paula showed me around. Because I, I went, I made sure I got there earlier this year so I wouldn't feel so like I need a baseball bat beaten. And she's showing me around. We're talking about the church and this stuff. I said, now that lady with the baby, she says, and she says well, she's right behind you. And then she's holding that baby. Went back to the doctor. Everything was perfectly normal. Baby was born, no problems. You see, I would, I could, if I'd been led by my flesh, I would, I would say, hey, ain't God, God ain't messing nobody. I, I, I'm going home. Thank you all for having me. Hope you got something out of it. I'm out of here. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And so uh, it's not our... It's not our flesh that God leads us by. Can you say amen? amen. Now, well, so when we pray in tongues, we get in communion with God. It is, the act, it is the atmosphere in which we become sensitive to God. So you need to pray in tongues. Then, you need to get your soul saved, restored, healed, made sound. James says in James 1, um, chapter 1, verse 21, he says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now, if you'll read James 1 in the first three or four verses, you'll find out James is written to the church. It is not written to unsaved people. So when he's saying receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls, he's not talking about getting born again. Now when we look up the word save, we talk about this often. It's, it's one of the most important New Testament words. And it is out of the sozo word group. The Greek word for saved is sozo. Uh, the the uh, noun equivalent is soterius which is salvation, so save. But soterius is a part of the sozo word group. And, and that word uh, means to heal, to preserve, to save, to do well, to be made whole. Again, he didn't say uh, save your pneuma, which is your spirit. Why? Because James is writing to the church. He said to save or make sound or make whole your suke, the soul. James is not talking about here receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to get you born again. He's saying receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to fix your head. Hello. God wants to fix your head. He said the other week, some folks need a check up from the neck up. Amen. Your head gets out of tune. When your head gets out of tune, when you get a carnal mind, you will listen to your body. E.W. Kenyon wrote in his writings and made this statement. It's one of the most profound statements you'll ever hear. A man or a woman who does not renew their mind to the Word of God will imitate a sinner. Why? 
Because the soul has not been renewed. I don't believe that. Romans 12. Just flip right on over to Romans 12. Y'all there yet? That ain't mean my Bible. Bring your Bible. Bring a notebook. I'm teaching too good for you not even taking notes. Hello? Romans 12, verse 1, says here, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. So what are we supposed to do with our body? You're going to have to sacrifice that rascal. He will give you a fit. Hello? Your body, I mean right now. If I left here and I told my body that Golden Corral was on the menu for the day and I could go in there and do whatever I wanted to do, I'd be home this afternoon going, oh. I could be redoing those rag that, that, that uh, commercial with Alka-Seltzer. I can't believe I ate the whole thing. You ain't it, Ralph. I can't, you know, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. You know, I mean, you know, you got to take an Alka-Seltzer to get some relief. Because my body will go in there and go, woo, fried chicken. Mashed potatoes, green beans, I mean corn, you know, ribs, I mean steak, whatever I want. I can have all I want. Okay, so it's not the best quality, but it's all I want. Soft serve ice cream. Swirl soft serve ice cream. With gummy bears. Yeah. See, your body has to be made a sacrifice. You just got to keep that rascal under. Why? Because it's carnal. It's death doom. It's mortal. It's not saved. You'll get a new body one day. When? Well, the Bible tells us when the trump of God sounds, when the archangels and Jesus shall descend from heaven with a shout. Shout the archangel. That's when you get your glorified body. You've got a carnal, mortal body right now. You've got a corruptible body. Are you here? So we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice, uh, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our... Now, King James uses the word reasonable, but that, that word is also translated, and probably better translated here, spiritual, which is your spiritual service. And, not or, and, be not conformed to this world. Now, I don't care what anybody says. God doesn't want you acting like the world. Hello. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Jesus did not act like the publicans and sinners to win the publicans and sinners. He ate with them, but he came with life. He didn't come to be like them. Well, I'm going to go out and drink a Michelob light, or I'm going to have me, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to shoot up some heroin, I'm going to smoke some dope with these guys so I can be like them, so I can win them to Jesus. They're going to pull you down and destroy you. Hello. There's more people concerned about being able to drink and do all kinds of stuff today than anything I've ever seen in my life in the church. And we wonder why the church is so emaciated and so weak. Jesus said that whom the Son has set free is free indeed. That doesn't mean you're free to do whatever you want to do. He came to liberate you from the, the, the dom domination and control of your life by Satan and his kingdom. And to liberate you to walk in the Spirit and to be in the Spirit as he's in the Spirit. To walk in the love of God. To experience the love of God. And to share and to be the love of God. Not so you could be like the world. Amen. His love for you did that. But he goes, okay. He says, be not conformed. Now the Greek word here for conform is a word that, that gives the idea of a mold. How many of you ever had jello as a kid in a mold? I mean, they used to have all these molds. They had little castles. They had all this kind of stuff. You know, they had Mickey Mouse ears or whatever. You know, whatever it was, you pour the jello. You, you get the jello hot and boil it, and you, it's, it's all hot. And you pour it in there, and it's upside down. You stick it in the freezer and come back three or four hours later, take it, turn it upside down, and you kind of tap on it, and it falls out, and it looks just like that mold. The container that it was in, it took the shape of. And that's what Paul's saying here. Don't let your life, be poured into the container of the world and come out shaped and acting and looking like the world. Be not conformed. Don't be molded. Don't be shaped. Don't be conformed to the world. But be ye transformed. Greek, I know you heard this before, but you need to hear it again. Be ye transformed is the Greek metamorpho, where we get our English word metamorphosis, to change from one state to another. To be a caterpillar and become a butterfly. To be a tadpole and become a bullfrog. Oh, Barry McGuire. Bullfrogs and butterflies. We've both been born again. Well, I love the song, but it's inaccurate. 
the, the, that analogy is of the transformation of the soul so you're no longer conformed to the world. And I, sing, I think it's a cute song, but in reality, it's not, it's not an accurate analogy. Because, see, you don't have the metamorphosis to get saved. When you're born again, you're born again. It's the soul that goes through the metamorphosis. Through what? The engrafted word, which is able to make the soul sound. You receive with meekness. So, be ye transformed, have metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind. Why? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, God's speaking to your spirit. Your, listen, your spirit's trying to speak to your head. Your body's speaking to your head. And your head has to be renewed. Because if it's not, it conforms. It conforms to the world, but God says have it transformed. So what do we do? We get into the Word of God and let the Word of God receive a meekness, the engrafted Word, which is a, <laughs> no, it's not, which is able to save, make sound your suke, renew the mind with the Word of God. Have that experience. What happens when the mind becomes over here? The Spirit's talking to us. God's talking to your spirit. Your spirit's talking to your head, and your head gets transformed. Now it becomes, and each step of that, it becomes more and more consistent of hearing what God is telling you to do. And instead of a thought going through your head and it's coming from your flesh and it, it lines up with your flesh and you're right out doing stuff like staying out, on, out all night witnessing the people or having sex with another man's wife because you're going to lead her to the Lord in the morning. Now I can tell you what would happen. If I, if I adopted that, here lies Dr. Taylor. And, and, and they would have a tomahawk on there. Killed by the five foot two inch Cherokee wife of his. Because she would bury that in my head, baby. Are you here? I said, are you here? You're going home. No, 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 no. God, God's not in that. That's not the spirit of God. Are you here? But see, as we renew our mind and, we, and we're no longer. See, Paul tells the church. It didn't happen automatically. He wouldn't tell you to do it. People come on and say, I got saved. I don't have any more problems. You know, baby, let me tell you something. You're going to have problems. It's what you do with those problems that produces the victory. The victory is available, but if you yield to the flesh, you're going to be in trouble. If you're following the flesh and not God, you're going to be in trouble. Hello? That's why babes need, need older Christians to help guide them. Now, you young whippersnappers think you know everything. And let me tell you something, honey. I was there. I was one of them. Nobody knew more than me three weeks after I got saved. And I like Brother Hagin used to say, it's a wonder that the church folks didn't have to come get me in out of the rain because I didn't know my head from a hole in the ground. Thought I knew everything. See, zeal is not a replacement for, for maturing and growing in God. We love zeal. Now, if we just got to steer it in the right direction. You older folks need to take these young folks under your wings and help them. Now, you got to be stable, too. You can't be a nutbag. Hello. That's why I'm here. Make sure you're not nutbags. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's why I'm submitted to authority and listen to people that over me and the Lord. Keep me from being a nutbag. I've seen some ministers get off by themselves for too many years, and, they, and you start listening to them talking. Ooh, brother, you, you stay one year too many out, out from under some, somebody helping watch over your life. Had a church in Tulsa, 5,000 people. 5,000. Huge church. Pastor went off, got invited by a group of homosexuals to come preach at their place. He went. And they washed his feet, had a foot washing. He came back and told the church, I, I missed it. It's the love of God's most important thing. You know, everybody's going to be saved. Start teaching universalism. Within a year, his church went from 5,000 to 200. Now, he had Oral Roberts and some other men calling him and saying, you're off. Put him on 2020 on ABC. And they asked him about what he was teaching then. He said, I can't prove to you out of the Bible what I'm, I'm teaching is right, but I know, I know I'm right. Now, if you can't find it in here, you better throw it out. Because see what's happened. If you can't prove it from here, 
Now you're listening to your flesh. He felt loved or whatever. Thank you, Jeff, for the, the He felt he because his flesh said that was love. He changed all of his doctrine to the flesh instead of the Spirit of God. Just because somebody washed your feet don't mean they're going to heaven. Hello? Are you here? Church ended up closing in two years, closed. 5,000 to closed. 5,000 to closed. And he wouldn't listen to those who were older in the Lord. Because he knew he was right. Hello? God, God, people, we have to learn what is God ideas and good ideas and what is leading me led by the Spirit and what's our flesh talking to our heads so that we can be effectively being led by God's Spirit. Are you here? You're going home. Don't be conformed. Psalm 23, 3 says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Brother Hagin said this, and one, and one time he said, of course, he's gone home to do the Lord, so we're quoting an older, you know, an older time in, you know, in the past 30 years when his books. He said, when our minds get renewed with the Word of God, then we can think in line with God's word, what God's Word says. We're able to know and prove the will of God. We don't have so many questions about the will of God when we get our souls saved, our minds renewed. The greatest need of the church today is minds renewed with the Word of God. That you may prove is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. Now, I'm, I'm, I know we, we, y'all know we got new cars. I couldn't afford new cars. I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't buying another car. I wasn't. Our van has eight more payments on it. I was going to pay that off, and we were just going to keep going because, you know, finance has been hit, and, you know, we've been attacked, and, I mean, things financially, it's been a mess. I mean, it's just been rough. I wasn't even thinking about a new car. Well, then Nathan blew the Jeep, Nathan blew the white car, and he went on his part. The, the oil pump freezed up on the, on the white car, went and pumping oil, and went no way to know it except until the engine broke, blew. Took it in. He said, well, he said it's got enough oil, and it shouldn't have done that in the pan. He said the oil pump froze up. When the oil pump froze up, no oil going to the engine, it, it blew the white car. Well, Jess and Cap lost their car the same week. Three vehicles down. Well, Jane said, what are we going to do? She said, we're going to buy a new car. I'm thinking, my head, here's my head. We don't need a new car. I mean, we've got to have another vehicle. Then, I, then, then when I found out how much it was going to cost to fix the white car, it won't even worth what it was going to cost to fix it. It will cost me more to fix it than I, if I turn around and sold it the next day, I'd lose money. So we go looking for a car. And I'm thinking, who's going to load us money? I mean, we're in a tight spot here. I mean, really. I mean, it's been tough for the past three or four years. But on the inside, now my head's talking the whole time. Here's my head saying, ain't nobody loaning you money. And then my head was saying, and how are you going to pay for it if you get it? And my head's going, you don't need a new car. Walk, rascal. My head's, but on the inside, something's saying go. And so we went. I said the inside. Well, we end up. Now, I didn't buy a new one only because the new one didn't have what I wanted. They, they had a used one. They had, they, the general manager had a demo, and it had what I wanted on it. And so the only reason I bought the, the used one that was a year old, less than a year old, it was a 216 with um, 8,900 8, miles on it, Okay. But it had the V6 in it, and it was the right color. It was black, and it was, had all these extra features on it that the one we were looking at that was brand new didn't have. Had the, uh, brand new and had the inline four. She, she wanted the V6. Well, we end up with that one. Well, the next time, there's chance saying, well, I'm tired of my Fiat. It's too small. Yeah, she does. That's right. <laughs> and so she goes in. And she, she goes in, she's $6,000 underwater on her Fiat. 
She bought that car three years ago. She still owes half of what she paid for it, and it's only worth a fourth. Found out that the Fiat's are the number one car in America for depreciation. They lose more money than any car, any car anywhere. And rightfully so, he said. That's open for commentary later. And so we're sitting there. Well, guess what? She's $6,000 underwater, and they have $6,000 in rebates. She breaks even. She's a wash. They said if you paid the car, if you go in the next three years and pay the car off, it's only going to be worth about four when you get done. She owed twelve. She's going to lose eight thousand dollars. At this time, she didn't lose. Any, she lost two hundred thirty-eight because it was two thirty-eight. She was two hundred thirty-eight underwater after the rebates and what it was worth. All right. Even, basically even. She didn't have a better time. She got a car. Well, Captain Jess, I get a phone call while we're at the dealership with Shannon getting her car. Daddy, where are you? Well, I'm at the dealership with Shannon. Do you know where Mommy is? Well, honey, she might be laying down. Our car just broke down. We've been putting, riding five, five, uh, five blocks and putting stop and letting it cool off. And it finally broke down. It just quit, went kaput, hauled it into the, you know, the, the, to, to Meineke, and, um, they're going to tell them how much it's going to cost the next morning. And so they start looking for another car. Well, you know, some issues, couldn't get it. Couldn't, nobody, nobody wanted to loan them money. Next thing you know, they walk out with a new car. Jeep. Everybody's got Jeeps. I'm just like, we all bought Jeeps. Okay? Well, Nathan's over there. Guess what Nathan don't have? His, 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 his oil pan has a rod from the engine through it. The only thing to do that is put another engine in it. I mean, re rebuilding it's going to cost more money than putting another engine in it. Because this, I mean, this shot. Well, Nathan goes in and gets another car. Job, now, here we are. We're at the dealership. He's making, you know, Guilford County School's $40,000 a year. They won't loan him money. He has no bills. He has no, he's not got no debt. That's why. You ain't got no credit. We're not going to loan you the money. So I talked to the guy on the phone. I said, well, well what if Janie co-signs? No, nope, y'all got too much. You already co-signed. You bought a new car. You co-signed on another car. Y'all got too much debt ratio. They won't do anything. I said, look, go try. I said, it won't hurt to try. He said, okay. Comes back, get a phone call from Shannon. She's on the phone. She goes, well, bring mama. <laughs> now, let me say this. You might look at this. Uh, somebody told Nathan, said, your, your family got a bunch of money. No, we don't. But I am telling you, all of a sudden, in, in three days, everybody in our family got a new car. And wait, no, wait, I'm not bragging. Because my head was saying, you don't need to. Everything I, reason-wise, said you don't need to do it. You don't need the debt. You don't need the payment. You don't need to be in this situation. Things have been bad. Things have been rough. Things have been tough. You have no view of a turnaround in sight. And, you know, and you're just, you're, but, but all of a sudden it all happens. So we want to go ride in our new Jeep. So Saturday morning, me and Janie, I mean, uh, Saturday afternoon, me and Janie get the Jeep, take off. We're going to go run out Monday, Monday, I'm sorry, Monday. Because that was Saturday. That was all Saturday. It all took Saturday. I was, in, I was in a dealership for three days. The crown for one of them, that was a marathon. The other three were over at Ilberton, which is where we started. For, at first, they didn't have the right color, and they didn't have the right price. The guy called me back right as I was signing the papers at Crown going, I got to the price you want. Sorry, buddy. I'm, I'm signing right now. <laughs> Too late. Boy, he was upset. I said, but I got, I brought all three kids over, and he sold all three of them a car. So he was happy. Yeah, he got blessed. So we're out riding, and, I, and I, my, you hear my wife call me Mr. D.O.T. I love road construction. I had to go ride on the new 73 out to 220 the other day because they've opened it up from the airport out to 220. Okay? They're going to finish the other the next few months, and it'll be all one seamless thing. But I had to go ride the new part. Well, we had gone out, and we'd gone out 68 all the way up to 220 to come back in to see what all the construction was and how close they were and that kind of stuff. I just do that every few months or every whatever just, just to see. I like it. I was not wasting gas. I was, I, was, I was spending money on pleasure for my heart. And I was getting blessed. But let me tell you, I'm out there riding in this Jeep. 
And I hadn't thought about I was I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about anything. I was just, we were just riding and talking, and, and something came up out of my spirit. Not Janie, because she's talking about something else. <laughs> and I heard the Lord say, and I, ta- I stopped. I stopped everything. We turned off with the music we were playing. Turn, you know, I think we have Shekinah Glory. It's got an SD card reader in it. You just put, you know, put it in there, and it comes up on your big backup screen. I got a big eight-inch sucker. I mean, it's... Shannon's got a five point something. Mine's eight. Hallelujah. Caps is five. Nathan's is like five. Mine's eight. It's huge. I'm older. I need it. Yeah, I need a large I need a large screen. And it floated up out of my spirit. And I'm gonna tell you, see, when God leads you, see, you think, I'm not just, I'm not telling this so I can tell you about I got a new car. I'm telling you what God's saying. Because see, your head can get you out of out of kilter. We watch God work and get everybody new vehicles. Every single person in our family. Hallelujah. And come floating up out of my spirit, I heard the Lord say, and I knew it was because I knew where it came from. He said, this is the beginning of the turnaround. I know I have a word from God. He said, this is just the, actually he said, just the beginning of the turnaround. He demonstrated, kept getting a clear sailing to keep doing my head, screaming and kicking and bawling and squalling. I mean, my head's going, you're nuts! Now think about it. I've co-signed for Shannon. Janie co-signed for Nathan. We bought a new car. We added thousands of dollars to our debt, our income ratio. But God says it's the beginning of the turnaround. Now that don't make any sense. Are you here? Because you know, I'm looking at used cars that are like you know, under 10. Can I get something? Can I, can I get into something that will get? You know, see, I'm trying to figure it out in my head. And something in here is saying go this way. I wasn't just making, well, I'm only going to have the best. In Jesus' name, I'm only going to have the best. See, you've got to be learn to be led by the Spirit. Fight a good warfare with the prophecies that went, when the Lord went, go before, he told Paul, told Timothy, fight a good warfare with the prophecies that went before thee. When God begins to speak in your spirit, and you know it, see, I've walked with the Lord long enough, when, sometimes your head's just leaping, screaming so loud, you can't hardly hear your heart, but I just kept getting this go. Even when Nathan came, Nathan came back and said, that, well, we can't, it's going to cost you X number of hundreds of dollars to get that vehicle you want. And so Shannon calls me, well, he's stepping down and getting it. I said, why? Man, by now, I'm like, and before I got three cars in, why we're going for the fourth one, I'm like, why is he going to step down and not get what he wants? Well, it's kind of expensive. I said, what bills does he have? I mean, yeah. He's making all that money and he got nothing to spend it on. Tell him to go get what he wants. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going from, you know, we can't afford that. Get what you want. I mean, it, leather panoramic roof. I mean everything in the planet on it. The only thing he doesn't have is seat warmers. You know? And they sell them at Walmart. The leading of the Spirit will lead you to a place and now all of a sudden all these things about renewing, all the things in my head that were trying to scream are getting shut down because the word's floating around in there. And yeah, you can do this and the church is, you know, we're turning around, I got a word from God. Now all of a sudden everything I'm looking at is like, oh yeah, praise God, we can do this. We can, you know, you know we can't afford it. Oh yeah, we can afford a building. We're, I mean, we've got a building coming. We're going somewhere. God's got the door open for us. It's the beginning of the turnaround. It's all turning around. Amen. Hallelujah. And it started with the leading of the Holy Ghost to go do something you didn't think I, I didn't think I should be doing. Because in reasoning and because in, you know, being wise, it didn't make a bit of sense. But when God leads you, it doesn't matter if it makes sense. Now let me say. You just don't go do it if you're not being led or if it's not, if it's not the Lord in it. Amen. I'm going to buy, you know, I'm going to buy a house with more money on it than, I, than I, can, I got to pay with. Well, see, God led me. I knew in my heart that we're supposed to go this direction. My head was screaming. My heart was going, yep, you got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah, I got it. Sitting in the driveway. Three of them, brand new ones, are sitting in the driveway. Well, 
Then we decided, you know what? Nathan's car, we're putting another engine in it. We're going to sell it. Get the engine, get the air conditioner fixed, sell it, get our money back out of it. I'm like, well, I won't sell that car. That 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee is a good vehicle. Yeah, the engine's blown. We're going to put another engine in it. It's, got, it's supposed to have 99,000 miles on it. That's, that's 70 less than was on the vehicle. It's got a reman transmission in it. All the air conditioner working. The dash been redone. Going to put a new air conditioner compressor on it. Body still looks great. I'm going to be driving it. It's got a sunroof in it. I'm going to park the van. We'll save the van for trips for the family when all the family goes. If it's just me and Jenny, we're riding in her Jeep. I like that car. You know? But around town, I'll be riding my Jeep again. I, got it, I had it for two weeks. It was mine. Two weeks after we got it, it became Janie's. And it was Janie's ever since. Until three years ago, four years ago, Nathan got it. Okay? Now it's going to be mine again. <laughs> Hallelujah! Brother Jess going to detail it for me. No, I'm just messing with you. Hallelujah. No, she ain't driving that one. I get it back, it's mine. She don't like a sunroof. I like sunroofs. Melanie, Jeff, let the women be silent in the church. <laughs> now, I told you that all that story. I know I said some of that last week or something, but I, I told you that because God brought me to a place he could give me a word. And the word that he wanted to get to me was the turnaround. But he knew my head was giving me a fit over stuff. And he had to do something, lead me, and I followed him. See, God will take you by the hand and say, just follow me. To a place where he did something that didn't make any sense, that I couldn't figure out how it could have happened, to show me he can do what I don't think can be done. So he could give me that word in a place and a time where I could receive it. See, if you told me that before the, the cars, my, my head would have shut it down. After the cars, my head's sitting on the sideline going, yeah, he, he, that's right! We got it. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. How do, oh, I said, it's just the beginning. So what happened next Sunday, the following Sunday morning, which, you know, well, that was Monday, you know, and we, you know, the, 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 the day before the offers on Sunday were one of the lowest we'd had in months. <laughs> and I went, we're turning around, hallelujah, it doesn't matter. And I said, it don't matter, it doesn't matter, because the turnaround started. Satan, Satan, everything it does, including the kitchen sink, but the turnaround started. I got a word from God. I said, I've got a word from God. Turnaround started. Can you say amen? amen. Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you the people are blessed. Thank you we walk in the, uh, the righteousness and of your covenant and walk up right before you. We thank you that we're going to be led by our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll pick up here next week and continue. Um, praise the Lord. Thank you all for joining this week. This week, we love you. If you, need, if you need prayer, if you need to know things about the Lord, call the church number or email us. Or you can email us at uh, Pastor Ed Taylor at FV, I mean, I'm sorry, Pastor Ed Taylor at AOL.com. Um, you can call us at uh, the church phone, 336-852-0088. That's 336-852-0088. Until we meet again, God bless you. And remember this, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.